I wanted to reiterate, while you're collecting yourselves for questions, um, that uh, some of the points the, the chairman made. Um, first, that this is the first time that we are holding a platform liable under COPPA for content on the platform. Um, second, that this, is a, that this is an historic penalty. Um, the chairman outlined uh, that it's 30 times greater than our next highest COPPA penalty, more than 10 times all of the COPPA penalties cumulatively imposed to date, more than three times larger than the largest privacy penalty uh, ever imposed on Google in any country by any regulator. Maybe most importantly, that this action is changing YouTube's business model, that YouTube cannot bury its head in the sand. YouTube cannot pretend that it's not aware of the content on its platform and hope to escape liability for COPPA. Um, YouTube is going to be explicitly held liable for complying with COPPA where it has actual knowledge of the content. YouTube is going to be required to seek out that actual knowledge um, through uh, requiring uh, content creators and channel owners to, spe to specifically designate whether they are directed to children. And as the chairman noted, uh, not only can we sue Google and YouTube for compliance with COPPA, but also individual channel owners and content creators. And once this order has been fully implemented, we intend to conduct a sweep of the YouTube platform to determine whether there remains child-directed content on the platform with respect to which personally identifiable information continues to be collected. You've uh, referred multiple times to the sweep that the FTC will conduct on YouTube channels, and it's an important part of the enforcement of this order. Yet there are 23 million channels that upload a combined 500 hours of video every minute. So given that amount of content, what kind of meaningful sweep can you conduct? Well, I think that we have a variety of tools at our disposal to cull through those 23 million channels and, and, and in an expeditious way. I mean, this is the way that we generally enforce COPPA, is by um, actually reviewing content to determine if it's directed to children. Uh, we have a variety of factors in our rule that we consider when determining whether or not content is directed to children. Um, and. So that's the way we do business. We, it has been successful so far. I think that I have no doubt that it will be similarly successful with respect to YouTube, despite the large quantity of, of information on the platform. There will, be con there will be consequences for them. We also think that YouTube has strong incentives to police its platform, both to avoid future enforcement actions by the FTC, but also because it's offering this platform to content creators. And if the FTC is bringing independent piecemeal actions against content creators uh, for violating COPPA, that may, that may discourage content creators from posting content on YouTube. Um, so the analogy that I think of, imperfect, is um, the expression about shooting fish in a barrel. And YouTube is the barrel, and the content creators are the fish. And so it's a place where, these, where this content is centralized, and essentially it's easy for us to find. Well, things are looking pretty bleak for YouTube. Okay, so first off, I want to plug the new and official Discord server. Yes, and come you know, hang out there and uh, you know, listen and download uh, my covers or whatever I'm working on before I even, you know, start making a video for it. And I highly recommend joining, especially if uh, things really do get rough for YouTube here for a while or forever. We're still yet to see what, you know, what happens here. All right, I'm going to level with you guys here. It's been a really shitty week. My car battery discharged thanks to a incomplete job by that mechanic shop I went to before. The weather went below freezing and was raining for the duration that I was without a car. The hydraulics on the hood struts also decided to give out. Well, the hood was up, but fortunately I wasn't under the hood at the time, so, yeah. And lastly, I've had to deal with credit card theft because some undisclosed business had a data breach. Luckily, I've got everything sorted out and just wanted to get back to working on music over here. 
However, I soon became aware of this whole FTC and YouTube COPPA drama thing going on. As I'm sure that most of you have probably heard or seen by now, YouTube is requiring all channel owners to designate their content as made for kids or not made for kids. Well, that's simple, right? You're probably asking. Well, I thought so too when I, I saw it for the very first time when I was in the creator studio. And then I read into things some more and did my research. Now, first, I have to clear up some huge misconception that a bunch of other people have been throwing around. This is not just some other adpocalypse, you know, demonetization thing again. This is something much more. If you think that this is only about ads, you've only touched the tip of the iceberg here. Disabling your ads will not protect you from the Federal Trade Commission should they decide to prosecute you. This affects not just the people who upload, but this is going to also affect the viewers as well. Because videos marked for kids will lose just about every major YouTube function. You'll lose features such as the comment section, info cards, and end screens, as well as the ability to save a video to a playlist or to a watch later list. Channels with the mark of death, or sorry, the made for kids designation will also lose their stories function, their community tab, and even notifications. Specifically the notification bell. Now, I don't know about you guys, but that's a hell of a lot to lose. Something like that happening would pretty much kill a channel. Because, I mean, yeah, you could still upload, but what good would it be if the subscri your subscribers aren't going to get notified anymore? To add on to that, your, your search rankings are going to, you know, tank even further because, well, there's, you know, you no longer have any comments or, you know, people are not going to be saving it to a playlist because those features are going to be gone. And so there goes the engagement and the algorithms is going to be like, oh, well, this video is not getting any engagement. So, you know, it's going to, you know, you're just going to fall off the face of the earth there. But, Dar, you're not a kid's channel. We're all responsible adults here. Yeah, I know, man. That's why I'm really pissed off about all this. You see, when it comes down to it, it's not for me. It's not even for YouTube to decide whether my content is made for kids or child-directed or not. That is a decision that is left to the FTC's sole discretion. Thanks to some vague guidelines, it's made things very confusing. Here, come on, let's, let's, let's dive into this, shall we? Alright, so here are the guidelines given by the FTC. Keep in mind this little tidbit down here that says, Note, YouTube Analytics is not designed to help determine if your content is child-directed. You should use the factors outlined by the FTC above to set your audience. So, it matters not that this channel's analytics show that this channel is made up of an overwhelming majority of manly metal men with an appreciation for game soundtracks of old and new, aged from years 18 to 34. Nah, that doesn't matter. All right, so let's read these guidelines. So something is considered child-directed if, quote, children are the primary audience based on the factors described below. Well... I don't consider children as my primary audience. I already know who my primary audience is. Oh, wait, what's this? Children are not the primary audience, but the video is still directed to children based on the factors below. Well, okay, what are the factors? Subject matter of the video. Example, educational content for preschoolers. Well, this isn't, a pre this isn't preschooler stuff. This is a video game covers channel. I'm a musician. However, I could totally imagine some old bureaucrat in Washington deciding, you know, ignorantly labeling anything video game related. Oh, it's a kid's thing. Well, what else do we have here? All right. Whether children are your intended or actual audience for the video. Well, no. I've never considered children as my intended audience, and they purely aren't my actual audience. All right, next. Whether the video includes child actors or models. Ha, <laughs> yeah, no, okay, what's next? 
whether the video includes characters, celebrities, or toys that appeal to children, including animated characters or cartoon figures. Okay, now, okay, wait, 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 just a minute here. A lot of things can appeal to kids, though. I mean, what, if I do a Mario or Zelda cover, something going to have gameplay in the background? Is, is that going to count? Am I going to get red flagged for that? I mean, well, what the hell, whenever I do uh, my, my skits, would that count? I mean, like, what if I do a, if I do the male guy voice or something, you know, Oh, well, gee, Mr. Dara, looks like we're really born with this whole Copa thing, you know? <laughs> I mean, this is ridiculous. All right, uh, what's next? Whether the language of the video is intended for children to understand. I mean, I don't go out of my way to be super fancy or smart sounding or anything. I try to, I mean, personally, I don't think I'm that articulate. You know, I just try to keep and keep things relatively simple and straightforward because that just feels natural to me. This feels natural. So, I don't know. Maybe children would understand, I guess. I mean, would this be another, you know, <laughs> mark against me or something? For being a simple man over here? All right, next. Let's see. Whether the video includes activities that appeal to children such as play acting, simple songs, or games, or early education. All right, here we go again. A lot of things can appeal to kids. I mean, well, okay, video games can appeal to kids. A lot of things can appeal to kids. Hell, seeing a guy rock out to video game music could be appealing to kids, too. I mean, and, and play acting? I mean... What the hell is that supposed to imply? Like, uh, um, like a, oh, no, Mr. Dar, <laughs> you know, was, geez. All right, hang on. Okay, we, we still got two more criteria here in the guidelines to go over. All right. Whether the video includes songs, stories, or poems for children. As hilarious as a metal rendition of Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star would be, <laughs> I don't think I have it in me to subject you guys to something like that. And if I do, you have my apologies in advance. Okay, final thing in the guideline. Any other information you may have to help determine your video's audience, like empirical evidence of the video's audience. Oh gee, I don't know, like uh, the, the, the analytics? Oh wait. So, at this point, you're probably thinking, all oh, the hell with it, man, just mark it as not for kids and be done with it already. What are they going to do to you? And so I think that we would have strong penalties in future cases against content creators as, as, and channel owners um, as well, uh, particularly when we would have a situation um, where the channel owner was specifically asked, are you child directed? And the channel owner said no. So when we see those facts, we're going to have to evaluate them. You know, every case is different. We'll have to evaluate the facts that we are given and, and in, we'll have to evaluate them in context. But if I'm a channel owner, those facts don't look so good for me, I think. Moving forward, content creators are more at risk than the actual platform at being fined? Content creators are always at risk of being fined because they're the con the, and the and channel owners because there we have a situation where we have a website or an online service that is directed to children. So there in the general audience platform, we still have this knowledge requirement that we have to, that we have to prove up. So there is, um, I think in theory as well as practically speaking, uh, generally a, a, a higher risk for channel owners and content creators who after all are con are creating this content and know intimately whether or not it's directed to children or not. A court can hold operators who violate the rule liable for civil penalties of up to $42,530 per violation. Now, look, I've always felt like I, you know, I'm always taking a risk whenever I upload a cover and you know, I worry that maybe one day it's it's not going to be the, the monetized kind of copyright claim thing that pops up, but like uh, one that becomes like a, a sh an actual strike against the channel. But you know what? At least with that, YouTube kind of like it acts as a buffer and the video, you know, you, the video will get deleted and, you know, you get a strike. With this, however, 
there is no buffer. YouTube is no longer liable, and the full burden of responsibility lies upon the channel owner now. It's part of what was worked out in a landmark settlement between the FTC and Google back in September. All YouTube has to do is implement and maintain a system to make sure it complies with COPPA. They're safe from legal action so long as they do this, and they would only become liable if they knowingly allow a channel to break compliance. All right, so this system that they're implementing and maintaining is basically a algorithm to automatically detect and set videos to child directed if it decides that oh this meets criteria for being child directed. Now, I'm sure a lot of you probably remember the early days of the content ID system and how that thing would just throw out false positives just all the time and you know people would wind up uh you know if, if something sounded vaguely similar to something else, it would it would trigger the system and oh this sounds like this and then you know someone you know this poor person would have have to go fight off this this wrongful copyright strike that's been you know placed upon their channel and I mean it's it's gotten better now but surely it was terrible back when it started and, and I mean I don't think it's that much of a stretch to theorize that this this new algorithm this new you know thing for you know detecting this this is it could it's probably going to be kind of buggy in the beginning. And because of that, we might see other channels uh, losing features while you know, the poor uploaders got to go and try to appeal the decision to say, hey, this, this isn't child directed. This isn't directed at kids. A lot of people are really freaking out about this, and rightfully so, I believe. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm about as broke and living pay to che- paycheck to paycheck as much as the next guy, and, you know... <laughs> Car troubles really hurt my wallet, but a potential legal battle with the United States government? That would utterly destroy me, man. It would destroy a lot of people, you know, financially. There's no way that anyone would want to risk something like that. Also, it's uh, not really encouraging to see one of the changes in YouTube's terms of service policy, because that's also going on, too, while this is all happening. Now, granted, they've always had the ability to terminate or suspend a user at any time for any reason. I mean, that's how most terms of service things go for most websites. If you go actually go look, you know, take a peek at them, it's, that's there. However, seeing everything else that's going on right now and what could potentially happen in the future here, why would they choose to specifically mention the whole thing about you know, not being commercially viable now? of old times. If you ask me, this is one hell of a bad omen if I ever saw one. So, after giving it lots of thought, and just really kind of mulling it over these uh, past few days as I've been looking into all this, really pains me to have to do this, but I can't think of any better option. And before you freak out, no, I'm not quitting. But... Every past video and future video on this channel will be marked as made for kids. With the exception of this video, this video will remain the only video that is marked not made for kids. So at least somewhere on this channel, there'll still be some bastion of, you know, community left, you know, uh, <laughs> the last hope or whatever. This, you know, place, last place will have comments still. Because, I mean, I've decided this is probably the best choice in order to legally protect myself from all this nonsense until hopefully maybe it you know, cools off or whatever. Fingers crossed. But yeah, I also decided it's probably the best choice to still be able to upload content here for all of you to watch and to share. And once again, I really, really implore you all to, to, join, to come join the Discord server because come January 1st of 2020 is... Basically, when this channel and then anybody else who's, you know, going to have this, the mark of death placed upon them here, either be it willingly or not, they are going to lose all those functionalities that I mentioned earlier. And I really want to try and preserve this little community that we've built up here and everything, you know, kind of built up and developed here over, over the years that this channel's been up. 
And look, I I really, really hope that I'm wrong about all this. I hope maybe just, I'm I'm just being really overly paranoid. And you know, hopefully, like I said, maybe th- you know, things are gonna cool off a bit. <laughs> maybe the the um, the legislation, the laws will be more clear. There's yeah, you know, some some's gonna get rolled back or some bit. Until then, as it looks right now, it's not really looking good. I highly recommend you guys go and do your own research on this. You know, don't just completely take my my word of doom over here <laughs> as as gospel. But you know, it's it, it'd be good to go do your uh, your own research into this because this is something that could potentially really change the landscape of YouTube here and just really affect the whole platform viewers and content creators. Uh, I've provided a few uh, links to some places in the, descri- the description box. Um, now, with all this being said, and as much as it sucks, it's going to take a lot more than some government regulation and inconveniences like this to stop me from doing my thing. <laughs> Music is my passion, and nothing short of death is going to stop this cowboy from making tunes. You can count on that.